Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. Now I was born July 4th, 1986. Today, I want to start off by saying a, a, a great thank you. Thank you to every single person that decided to go to your local shelter, find you a dog, take it home. Something that is just very, very powerful about doing such a thing that it, it says a lot about who you are as a person, that you decided to take something that was already, best way I could say it is, used from somebody else, and they decided that they didn't want it, they didn't need it, they didn't want to care for it, and you decided that I'm going to take over from now on and be able to take care of this. It's something that is just so empowering about doing such a thing that I'm going to tell you it's going to set you up for an absolute level of mass level of success in your future because it's something that is, is challenging to, to most of us to try to take what is someone else's problem. The dogs didn't end up in the shelter because they were awesome, amazing, the best, the sweetest, the non-jumping, non-digging, non-biting, non-aggressive, non none of this. They, they, have, they had some sort of issue and that's why they ended up there, more than likely. Not all the cases, but more than likely that's usually the case. When you have a really, really nice dog, you do anything in your power to keep it. I don't care if you're moving overseas, you, you keep it. That's what we do as, as, as people with our dogs, if, if it's a really good one. So it says something that is just an absolutely amazing thing that for me personally, I, I, I have dogs that I need that I need to get bred forward to do a specific task, a specific job. But in reality, if you're looking for a pet inside of your household, go to the shelter, find you a dog. It's going to call your name. Just look at them all. And there's going to be one that you're just going to look at and just say, yep, that, that's the one for me. I'm going to take that one home right there. To me, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a lesson that we need to learn. It's a lesson that we need to, to be able to, to figure out how to be able to get through. And the dog is going to teach you a lot. It's something that is absolutely amazing about animals. And, and that all starts with, again, what I want to talk about is the relationship with that animal. Especially with getting a brand new puppy or a brand new who knows how old the dog even is into your home. There's something that I want to explain about how to start with getting that relationship to be correct with that animal. To make sure that you're going to be set up for the right level of success up front and not, not playing no games, not doing no manipulation, not having anything where it's just, it, it, it's, we're unsure, is any confusion, anything weird. You want to start off with every single dog the exact, the exact same way. And that is coming at them to be very, very neutral. Hey Johnny, come here homie. Come here. And I want to show you the main first thing that you should work on with your dog when you first get any dog. I don't care if it's an eight-week-old puppy, and I don't care if it's a dog that we have no idea how old it is. Any, hey, Johnny, come here, man. I, I don't care what age it is or, or, or anything with it. This dog, I, had no, I know, I know, I hear you, man. I had no idea how old this dog was when I first got him. I had no idea any of his history. I had no idea other than the fact that I saw him in his kennel, and this dude would be jumping six feet. And he just wanted to throw hands and put it all in your face. And, and I just saw a wild, crazy, savage, ruthless looking dog that I didn't select this dog, but this dog was chosen for me because I went to a dog training school and this is the one that was assigned to me. Same with that one there. And I got another dog over there I took from there as well. I don't know how old any of them are, but they're just, they're just dogs. But the number one thing that I'm going to tell everyone to start off with your dog to be able to get them to understand who you are in a nice, neutral stance is to be neutral. Don't beg them with giving them treats like, please, please, please come to me, please come to me. Don't bring no toys involved like, please, let's play, let's play. Just hang out with the dog for a couple days. Give the dog a couple days to figure out and realize that we're safe, that things are good to go. And that's the one thing that I'm gonna say is the main thing of being able to understand what properly socializing your dog is. Properly socializing your dog is not having them meet a million people, meet a million dogs. It is a matter of putting them in the environment and realizing that the environment is very, very neutral. There's nothing scary about it. There's nothing dangerous about it. There's nothing that they need to be worried about in it. And the more that you come at that animal up front neutral, the more that that animal is going to start to trust you, appreciate you, love you, and respect you. You, ha you, you don't want to try to manipulate them. You don't want to try to tease them. You don't want to try to force them. It's something that a lot of us really like to do when we see especially a fearful dog when you first get it. You get that fearful dog and you're just like, oh, please, please, come on out, please. And you're just, you're throwing treats in his face. And, and, and if that dog is scared already, all you're doing is amplifying that scaredness inside of it, saying, yeah, this is wild, this is weird. The dog, oh, I, we understand our intents as human beings, what we're trying to do. Our intent is not to harm. Our intent is to get that dog to be in a better place. But the dog has no idea what's going on. It does not understand human emotions. It understands its own dog emotions. And a dog, as, as maybe, especially if it's a dog, I don't care if it's an eight-week-old dog, they come with issues. Every dog has problems. They're not perfect. They're not just robots that are just set it and forget it. There's something going on with every single one of them. And, and the main thing is we, we want to focus on making sure that that dog for sure isn't scared, worried, nervous about us because we're the ones that want to start to take care of them. And the best way to start that is to just be neutral. Don't come in with a lot of force and, and sit here and stay here and do this and do anything like that. Don't come out there with a whole lot of praise of please, please, please. Just be, just be a body. Be a body. Be there. Just hang out. Just, just put them on this leash and just hang out with them. Stay, let them stay near you to realize time and time and time again that nothing bad 
is going to happen to them. And, and that's just the way that dogs work up front. They're like, is something bad going to happen to me? They're not looking at what's good. They're like, what's bad going to happen to me? Something bad is going to happen. Something bad. They're going to do something to me. They're going to they're going to give up on me. They're going to abandon me. They're going to they're going to leave. They're just going to quit on me. That's what the dog is is thinking and going through at first. So it wants to know that you're not out here to hurt it and to harm it. We got to get past that. Once we get past the the, the dog realizing that it's not going to get hurt, that's when we can move on to start doing some absolutely amazing things. That's when we can move on to to finally being able to learn how to be able to train with that dog. Got to get them to sit. How to get them to heal. How to get them to loose leash walk. But if a dog doesn't care about you, if the dog is scared of you, the dog is nervous about you. If the dog is scared, not only that it's going to get hurt, but scared that you're going to make it do too much stuff. The dog isn't going to want to do anything for you. So the best thing to do is be neutral. Just grab the dog and just just hang out with them. Put him on his leash or her leash. Put her on the leash and just 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 walk around the house. Just just have him on and have him close to you and and have him moving around with you. Have him have him everywhere everywhere around you where you go. So that through time they can realize you're not hurting them. You're not trying to damage them. You're not going to harm them in any sort of way. They'll start to just build up and realize. And because the, the big thing here is also don't try to impose yourself on the dog. Just just give him space. Allow the dog to come to you. When the dog wants pets, it will let you know. Don't run up to it and put it on the leash and start grabbing the leash to pull it close to you just so you can, you can pet on it. Don't do that. You, you want to respect the dog, and the dog is demanding respect. It wants to know that it's going to get respect from you up front. We want to start that way at first. We don't want to just, just, you better respect me because I feed you, because I give you water. No, no, it doesn't work that way. You can't demand that. You can't force that. It's something that is only given. And the animal is going to give it to you. They will. But they want to make sure that they can trust you first. It's you that you got to put out first. The dog's not going to put out first. That's one major thing that we all need to just really understand. Just put your trust into that dog and give it some space. Give it some time. Allow it to be able to come to you. When they come to you, they, they lean up on you. They give you a little attention. You go ahead and pet them. If the dog is jumping and going wild, you just ignore it. You're like, dude, I'm not, I'm not paying attention to that. You, just, you jump and go wild over there. You just you do what you do, and I'm over here. Because you want to let that dog know, like, that's not what I'm looking for. That's not acceptable. So you want to be able to calm them down. When they calm down, they'll calm, and then they'll come up to you, and they'll present themselves. They always, always do this. I have yet to run into a case like this. They always. They'll be jumping and going wild. As soon as they calm down, they'll, they'll relax, and they'll look up at you. Like, hey, what's going on? And then they'll come over to you and then they'll they'll ask, like, hey, okay, what is it that that, that we're gonna do now? Because that that clearly we're not doing that. So now where are we going? They always come to you. They always relax. They always stop jumping. They always stop pulling. They always stop doing any extra. They always go to the point of looking exactly like this right here. This is what they always do. And then because they're realizing, hey, you're safe. It's cool. I don't need to worry about jumping and running and lunging and going crazy and, and acting all wild because around your presence, you are safe. You, you bring calmness, you bring peace to me. And the dog is gonna to wanna to stay as close as possible to you because everything out there is danger. That's why they're always on the move. It's like, oh, something over there is scary. Oh, something over there is nervous. Oh, something over there, something over there, something over there, something up here, something over there, something down here. The dog is just terrified in reality. And we wanna be able to bring them to get close to us because this bubble right here, you stay with me, trust me, all that out there is not gonna be able to affect you. All that is not gonna be able to do anything to you because I'm gonna keep you safe. I'm gonna make sure that you're good to go. That's what we want to build our dogs to understand about us. Not with, let me throw a treat, throw a treat. No, we don't want to do that. Not yet. You can get to a point of that, but not yet. You want the dog to know that you are safe with just your presence and your being. That you can be calm. You can be chill. You can be relaxed and the dog relaxes. And then the dog is like, oh, okay. I can, I can work with this. I can deal with this. This is the main foundation, all you want to work on with the dog at first. This is something that I would spend, in reality, a couple of weeks on. A couple, meaning two. I would spend two weeks on just having your dog with you. Don't praise them. Don't even, don't even really pet them. Don't even really give them too much attention. Just, just hang out. If they come to you and give you affection, then yes, you give them back affection. But if they're doing anything, just completely ignore them. Don't pay any attention because that's the one thing that we always run into problems with is a, a, a lack of understanding. We're, we have miscommunication going on because when the dog is jumping and going wild, we give it, we touch it, we, we interact with it. So then that's what the dog thinks that it needs to continue to keep on doing to be able to be in, say, your good graces, that we just are on this hostile thing always, as opposed to just being able to hang out and being able to relax. Once the dog relaxes and hang out, it's like, okay, now we can interact. Now we can hang. And then the dog's going to know, okay, the only way I could, I could interact with this person and be able to, to, to figure out what, what we're going to do next is if I calm down. 
And you're like, yes, man, that's what I need. Yes, girl, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that. I'm not looking for the wild and crazy. I'm looking for the calmness. And the calmness is what the dogs are begging for us to be able to provide to them. They're begging that because they're, they're, all, they're, they're in this go, go, go stage. It's, 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 this is super similar in the same with us as human beings. We as a people are begging to be able to figure out how to be able to calm down. That's why there's so many medications out there to chill you out. There's so many drugs, there's alcohol, there's, there's all this stuff to be able to relax us. And, and there's something that's, that's amazing and, and just, 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 expe- it's just spectacular to me about being able to real- figure out how to calm yourself down without needing no sort of substance, but just being able to be in the presence of. And that's something that we as humans struggle with because we're always future projecting or, or past thinking. Where dogs don't do that. The dogs are living right here. So for us to be able to get them to be able to stay right here, they're right here. They're just they're they're in the moment, this second. We're not on looking over. They're not thinking about what they're gonna eat in two weeks. They're not thinking about what they ate two weeks ago. They're thinking about what are we going, what are we doing right now, right now? And we can get them to get in that calm state, regardless of what state that we are in ourselves. Ourselves, we may be a little anxious. We may be a little crazy. We may be a little paranoid. We may be a little frustrated. We may be a little all these things. But it doesn't mean that we need to explain and communicate that to the dog. We don't want the dogs to be that. We want them to be themselves and be independent in a way to be able to help us if we're anxious, to be able to help us if we're going frantic, be able to help us and guide us through that. When you see a dog that's relaxed, it's hard to be in just like this, this obsessive thoughts of, I don't know what to do and I don't know where to go. And that's where we start with our dogs. We start with being very, very neutral to them and, and giving them that understanding that calm is what we're looking for. All that rampage of running and gunning and going and doing and being, that is not what we're looking for. And it always starts with just having that dog stay in your presence and realizing that you're safe. Allow them and give them the time needed. Some dogs, this could take 20 seconds, five, five minutes. It could be fast. Other dogs, it could take literally weeks for that dog to just finally look at you and just say, we're good to go. Because we don't know where and what a lot of these dogs came from. Like I said, I don't care if it's an eight-week-old dog. They have issues. They may be super confident in one way, but they're, they're, they're super paranoid and lacking in another way. So we want to be able to give them that time to be able to realize that we are safe without no manipulation, without no trickery, without no, no deceitfulness, but just straight up real. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to do anything bad to you. I'm not going to make you do anything that you don't want to do. Because that's one thing that we, we as people, we as human beings just love doing this when we first get a dog. We get a dog, we bring it home, we put it on the leash, and we start getting some treats, and we're just like, sit, sit, sit. And the dog's looking at you like, dude, we, what's going on here? Like, he's just so, so confused. It's like, well, what's happening? You're throwing these treats at me and trying to get me to this and trying to get me to that and trying to go over here and trying to go over here. And it's just like, just like, I don't even know who you are. It's like you going and finding some person at the store and just start start hugging them and, and talk, yo, well, we're going to go over here and do this. It's like, I don't know who the heck you are. Like, I don't know you. Why would I listen to you and come along with you and do anything with you? I don't know who you are. And it's something that we as a people should really be spending most of our time on realizing that about these animals as well, that they don't know who you are. Allow them to realize you. Allow them to be able to, to smell you. Allow them to be able to watch you and study your body language and make sure that your attentions are good for that animal and not trying to harm and trying to hurt that animal. Watch them. Just keep on studying them and allow them to study you. And then they'll, they'll open up and they'll look at you like you are safe. One day you'll just see a big significant change that they're just like, you, you are safe. You, you are good to go. You, you are here for me. And then that's when we can start doing some sit stays with some treats. Then we can start doing all this stuff with these treats because then, then the dog realizes the treat is an added bonus. And it's not the thing that, I'm, that you're using to convince that dog to do something. They're going to do it for you. And the treat is going to be something that is going to be added to make sure that it's fun and exciting for, for them to be able to do. But you do not want to start that way. You, if, I don't care what training you have on your dog. Just, just take 100 steps back and start at day one, mission one, minute one. And just start all over again. And just start with, dude, hang out with me and I'm not going to do anything to you. I don't have any expectations on you. I'm not going to demand anything from you. I'm not going to force anything of you other than just stay stay with me to recognize and realize that I'm not going to hurt you. That's something that we as people have the responsibility to be able to get these dogs to be able to calm down and be able to relax. It's a responsibility to be able to train and be able to teach them. It's our responsibility to be able to make sure that they're going to be good for society. It's not something that is just a given to them. It's not something that is just, 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 oh, oh, just they know it already. No, we have to, we have to guide them and teach them and show them. And some dogs, we, we have to motivate them because they're just, they're lacking and struggling in places. We have to build their confidence in some cases. We have to take some of that confidence away in some cases. We, we, we have to do that with the dogs. We don't just set it and think it's going to be good to go. It's for us to do that for them. And it's, it's just start over. 
Take steps back. If you're just like, you're frustrated, I don't know this and I don't know that, and why is my dog this, why is my dog that, just, just start over and, and, and go back to just put the dog on the leash and have it hang with you and do not interact with them. Don't interact with them. Just, just, just be. So the dog can, can, can trust you again. So the dog can appreciate you again. So the dog can understand you again. So the dog can be able to just move forward with realizing that you are safe. I know we were butting heads for a little bit. And we were getting frustrated with each other for a little bit. But let's just, let's just redo this and realize that we, we are good to go. We're fine. Everything's all right. And something that, that is just, just very, very powerful about that so that we can, we can just build up that relationship again to be really, really good. And that's the, 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 the number one thing to start with. Because we don't know anything about no back history about anything. We don't know if the owner with the dog before used to just be savage. Used to beat them, choke them, just, just throw them around. We don't, we don't know. We don't know if they were uh, doing stuff that, that was just antagonizing that dog to make it want to have to bite. That if you are doing stuff to it to make it just think like, oh, that's the same person. That's going to happen again. No, you want to come in completely neutral, a blank slate, a new, a new person. A, 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 a individual person to that dog, not allow it to think that something from before is going to come and happen to me again. Hey, uh, Oreo, get off my shadow, man. Uh, get down. You want to make sure that, that you, you are that safe place for that dog, that no matter what was going on before, you're, you're the safe one. A lot of these dogs have, have been around animal control people, for instance, have been around the police picking them up, and it's, it's, it's a scary world to them. So you want to let them realize that at least there's one solid person that isn't trying to hurt me, isn't trying to do anything mean to me, isn't trying to poke me and, and tug on me and, and smack me and hit me and, and do all this to me. There's one person that just is, is, is chill and just very, very neutral. And then you can start building from there. That's the, the number one thing that I would suggest every single person with every single, I don't care how long you've had your dog, I would put that dog on a leash and just have it hang out with you and do not interact with them. Allow them to come to you. Once they come to you, hey, uh, Oreo, you, you've been pushy this week, homie. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, to do absolutely nothing and just, just hang out, hang on out. And uh, I wanna switch dogs here so that I can do that myself right now to make sure that I can get one of my dogs to just totally understand what the heck it is I'm looking for from them. Come here, Oreo. What the heck it is I'm looking for from them. Come on, man. All right, lay down. And something that is just, just super simple about just starting over. A lot of times the dogs are just, they're, they're, they're nervous and they're nervy and they're just, who knows what's going on. And I can even admit that with my dog sometimes. Like this dog, he, he gets nervous. He's like, I don't know what the expectations are because I was, I was too hard on him sometimes when he was a little baby. Just, just, just demanding too much from him and pushing him too hard and, and just, just saying, go, 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 go. And I'm just like, that's not the way to do this. It's not the way to do this. It's not what you want in your dogs to be like. You want them to be able to just be pretty, pretty chill with you. They want, you want them to, to respect you. I came with this boy, he's just like, we're just working, man. I needed him for work when I got out here. I was I had goats running away and goats doing this, and I was like, I need you. So I was just like, we're, we're just going. We don't have a time to just, just play and hang out. And I really, that is not the way to do it. That is not the way to go. And sometimes the only way that you're able to really figure out that aha success moment is to be able to see your stuff and realize that it's messed up. It's not right. So I need to start over and do something different here. And that's to start over, do something different, is just coming at them and, written, and let them see you as like, Everything's good. Everything's all right. Let's reset this. Let's 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 hang out a moment. Let's just let's just just take it back a step because I think we're going too far and try to push it too fast without having a good understanding of of who we are with each other. It lets you realize that I'm actually not trying to hurt you, even though it may seem like I am. But I'm not trying to. I may be trying to push you too hard, but I'm not trying to. Just 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 take it a step back and just just relax. And it's something that I want every single person to do with your dog. Your dog needs to be socialized to you first. It needs to respect you, not what you do and what you have or any of your items, but you as a human being and how you are in your presence. And then you take that dog to the next place. You can get them to get calm on a leash with you in the house. You take them in the backyard. You take them to the front yard. You take them down the street. You take them to the park. You take them everywhere you go. Then you get, let them just be able to see the world. That's socializing your dog, to be able to see every single different item. Not meeting dogs and meeting people. And they, they, They've seen two people, they've seen enough people. They've seen three dogs, they've seen enough dogs. They just need to be in the presence of. And the way to start that is to make sure that they're good with you. If they're not good with you, I'm telling you, 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 you there's no reason to go to the next step. If, you're, if you can't simply put a leash on the dog and have it to stay in your bubble and call them and them come to you 100% of the time, there's no reason to go to that next step. You're, you're pushing it too fast, too hard because then the dog is, is confused and it doesn't know what's going on. And with that, the main thing that I just want to say is come at your dog neutral. 
Stop trying to demand things from them until they understand and realize who you are. Stop trying to force them. Stop trying to manipulate them. Stop trying to cheat them. Stop trying to do any of these things to the dog that is just, just going backwards and making sure that things are going to continue to keep on getting worse and worse for you. Start just coming at that dog to let them know that you're safe. You're safe. You're good. And the rest of the world may not be, but you are. So that if they do get nervous, they're going to come straight to you. You want your nervous dog to come to you instead of go at the end of the leash and barking and looking crazy and, and going, going wild at everybody. No, they, that, that dog out there may be crazy, but if you stay with me, I'm going to keep you safe. That's the language that we need to communicate to our dogs. We, our dogs need to know that we are that safety rock for them. And once they understand that, I'm telling you, you, you you're going to have very, very, very limited issues with your dog. It's going to want to do absolutely everything for you because it trusts you. When they trust us, I'm, that's the, the man's best friend that they say about these dogs, that they will, they will do whatever because they know that you're looking out for the best of them. And that's the start to being able to have that dog that you're looking for is just come at them to let them know that they can trust you. When they trust you, now we can, we can do some sits. Now we can do down. Now we can do place. Now we can do some tricks. Now we can wave. Now we can roll over. Now we can sit pretty. Now we can do all that. But wait, wait to do any of that until that dog hears, your, hears his name out of your mouth and looks at you like you're the world's best thing on the planet and it runs right up to you every single time. You're gonna, I'm, that's, that's, that's the amazing dog that you're looking for. And if you don't have that, take steps back. Take steps back. Thank you.